One of the most frustrating messages in the whole of Power Query is the formula dot firewall error. It only ever appears when we try and do something advanced. And what do those error messages even mean? Well, hopefully by the end of this video, you'll see that the formula firewall is actually there to help us. And we just need to find a way to work with it. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's start here by thinking about what is the formula firewall. The purpose is to prevent users from unintentionally passing data between two data sources. Let's have a look at a brief example to understand this. Let's suggest that we had an Excel workbook which contained a passport number. We're going to use that passport number in a dynamic query to a website. So therefore we're gonna pass that value from the Excel workbook into a URL. That URL will then be used in a query to then query a website. Now the issue here is that that passport number is probably confidential information, which means do we really want to share it with an external or a public source? Now Power Query has no idea whether the value we're passing is confidential or not. Therefore, rather than allowing the risk, Power Query stops the data with the formula firewall and asks us, are you really sure, is this what you want to do? And then all we have to do is set up our queries in the right way to make sure that we work with the formula firewall. Now, the formula firewall errors can appear in two formats. There is the reference other queries format, where it says formula.firewall query, and then the query name, and then whatever the step name is, references other queries or steps, so it may not directly access a data source. Please rebuild this data combination. The other error is the privacy levels error. And this one is the formula.firewall query, and then the query name, and then the step name, is accessing data sources that have privacy levels which cannot be used together. Please rebuild this data combination. These error messages look similar to each other, but actually how we resolve them is very different. The error on the left arises when the formula firewall is not able to operate correctly due to how the queries have been structured. In the background, Power Query creates partitions, and this is how it handles different data sources. Now each partition does not have direct access to other partitions. Instead, it makes calls through a gateway. Therefore, if our queries are structured so that one source provides input into another source, the gateway can't operate correctly. So therefore, it leads to the formula.firewall error. But if we structure our queries the right way, it means that the gateway can operate correctly. And we'll see an example of this in a few moments time. The query on the right is much easier to deal with. We just need to set the privacy levels of our sources correctly and make sure that those sources are compatible with each other. And we'll see an example of that too in a few moments time. Here in Power Query, I have a table that shows currency, currency name, how many units per US dollar and US dollars per unit. And these are the exchange rates from xe.com. So this was a web query using this as the URL. So it's selecting the USD as the base rate for the 15th of January, 2023. And we can see the output of this query inside Excel. So it starts here in cell B7. In cell C3, I've entered a date. And what we want to do is to be able to retrieve the exchange rate from any date. So I've got a date entered here. And then in cell C5, I've got a dynamic URL. It starts with the first bit of the xc.com web address, followed by currency tables, then it has the US dollar base rate. After that, it then creates the date based on our cell in C3. This cell has been given a named range called URL path, and we've also loaded that into Power Query. So if we head back into Power Query and select the URL path, you can see that we have our source, which is related to our UL path named range. Then all I've done from there is right clicked on the value and selected drill down to get to this individual value. Now in theory, we should be able to take our URL path and insert it into the source for our FX rates query. So I'll enter URL path. And unfortunately, this leads to our first formula firewall error. And if we come up to view 
and then select query dependencies, we'll be able to see what the issue is. So our effects rates query is based on two inputs. It's based on the current workbook and it's also based on the xe.com URL. Unfortunately, our queries are currently cascading from one into the other. Therefore, the gateway that makes sure that the formula firewall operates correctly can't work. So we need to restructure our query. To do that, I'll come up to the URL path, I'll click view and go to the advanced editor. I'll select the text between let and in and then press control C to copy that and then close the advanced editor by clicking done. Then we'll come to the effects rates query and go to the advanced editor again. I'll place a few lines after let and then paste the text that we previously copied. Now here we have two steps that are both called source. We can't have that, so we'll call the first one source X and then that's then reused in the second line. This query is now called column one, which isn't a great name. Let's call that web URL. Then every step in Power Query must have a comma after it. So I've inserted that. We don't currently have any syntax errors, but I will replace my URL path, which was our previous query with web URL and then click done. Now it might not look like anything has changed, but it has. If you look at that error message, it is different to the previous error message. It now says that this error message is because it's accessing data sources that have privacy levels which cannot be used together. So we've already removed that first formula firewall error, but you have to really look at those error messages to realize that that's happened. Right, we don't need our URL path anymore. So I'll select that query right click and then delete. Okay, so now we need to fix our privacy levels. To do that, I'll come up to file, options and settings, and we can do this in two ways and I'll show you both of them. First of all, let's come up into query options in the current workbook section under privacy. So then I could check this option that says ignore the privacy levels and potentially improve performance. And I'll click OK. And I'll just click between the steps to force that query to refresh. Look at that, fantastic. We now don't have either formula firewall error. And if we come up to view and then query dependencies, you'll see that we now have those two separate sources coming into that one query. So we have rebuilt our data combination. Click close to close that. So we've taken the option to ignore privacy settings here. That might not necessarily be the best option. So come to file, options and settings, query options. I'll come to privacy and apply that option back on. Just click between those two steps. There we go, we now have our error message again. So the other option, Come to File, Options and Settings, and then Data Source Settings. In here, you can see our current workbook. I'll click Edit Permissions. Now, our current workbook has an organizational level. I'll come to Global Permissions and look at xc.com Currency Tables and Edit Permissions. You'll see that this currently has a public level, and we'll look at these levels in a few moments' time. But if I change that to organizational as well, click OK, click close and move between these two steps, you'll see that that also removes that formula firewall error because the privacy levels of our workbook and also the URL are now compatible with each other. So now I'm going to home, close and load and our Excel workbook should now be completely dynamic. So if I change the date to the 14th of January, 2023, go to data, refresh. There we go, and our exchange rates update automatically. So before we finish, let's just have a look at these privacy levels that we can apply to different sources to make sure that we select the right ones. First of all, there is the option of none. That means there are no privacy levels applied at all. This isn't the same as ignoring privacy levels, it means that a privacy level hasn't yet been set. 
The next level is private. That means the data is confidential or sensitive and we can't pass that data into any other source. Then there is organizational and this is the level that was applied to our Excel workbook and any source marked as organizational can share data with other sources marked as organizational. Finally, there is public. This is how xc.com was originally set. It's a public website, therefore the data is public. And any source marked as public, that data can be shared with any other data source, including data sources that are marked as public or organizational. But we can't share any information from organizational sources into public. Therefore, when we made both data sources organizational, they were then compatible with each other to be able to share the data. Well, that's it for this video. We've seen how we can fix the formula.firewall error in Power Query. And actually, it's not really an error. It's there to help us. We just need to understand how it works. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and like. And if you like what we teach, then why not think about joining our training academy over at excelloffthegrid.com forward slash academy. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.